My name is Phil Thornton. I'm an editor of the London Summit website. Uh, the website has been established to stimulate international discussion and debate around the issues to be covered at the London meeting. As part of this engagement, we're delighted today to be joined by Lord Malik Brown, the Prime Minister's envoy for the London meeting, as well as being the Foreign Office Minister for Africa, Asia and the United Nations. Welcome, Minister. The London Summit, as you know, will bring together leaders of the world's advanced and emerging economies, including the G20, to work cooperatively to restore stability and stimulate global economic growth. But will developing countries, and Africa in particular, be fully and effectively represented at the London Summit? Well, I think yes, and for two reasons. One, that the developing countries who are part of the G20 but were not part of the older G8, you know, really is it, it, it's for them a matter of principle to make sure that they're not just representing their own interests as a sort of middle income group of countries, but that they are opening the doors to the views and needs of poor countries. So I think, you know, the whole goal of the G20 is to be open and inclusive. But second, you know, the Prime Minister has gone out of his way to reinforce Asian and African representation to make sure that there are a couple of leaders there who are there because they lead regional organizations rather than because their country would qualify for the G20. So we will have an additional African and Asian leader at the summit table. Uh, so what do these countries in Africa, Asia and, and other developing nations, what, what do they want the G20 to achieve this April? What are their priorities? Well, they, they're thinking very big. Uh, they, you know, for a while sort of hoped that their economies were delinked from the Western economies. And as late as the first of these summits, which occurred in Washington in November, they hoped this could be dismissed as a kind of financial crisis of Western economies in the Western banking sector. Since then, it's clearly become a global economic crisis that affects households, families everywhere. So, you know, they've got big ambitions for this. They see the world as at an economic crossroads and they see their own economies as particularly pinched by what's happening. Their exports are falling, commodity prices are falling on which many of them depend, uh, and their ability to borrow is decreased. So the economic effects are coming through in all kinds of ways and they're, they're looking for big solutions.